Hello there, my YouTube family. How are you? I am so glad to be back with you once again. I am Helen Sadler, your destiny helper. Coming to you, first of all, thanking those of you who have just joined my YouTube family by subscribing. And those of you who have not subscribed, please feel free to subscribe by pushing that bell. Once you subscribe, push that bell. And every time I upload, you will be the first one alerted to new material coming on this port. And I want to thank you for the many emails that I'm receiving and the comments, the encouraging comments. Thank you so much. Uh, my live now will be on a different night. I usually do my live on Thursdays. We're going to do it on a different night since the church has uh, opened fully. So I will be doing that on Fridays. And you will see me more lives during the week, uh, during the day. So don't forget to subscribe and continue to email me with your comments and requests. And those of you, if I use your request, you make sure you leave your email with me by writing me at destinyhelper12s at gmail.com. And there is a special gift if I use your suggestion. Thank you so very much. I want to talk about something that many of you are writing about. I have did numerous videos on love bumming. But um, I want to take it from a different perspective. Um, I overheard uh, a narcissist talking about love bumming and how they feel about love bumming. We know what love bumming does to the supply, but do we know the mind of the narcissist while they are love bumming? You know, a narcissist, we say a narcissist cannot love, but a narcissist have their own definition of what they call love and when they are with the new supply and they enter into the relationship with the new supply the narcissist think they have found the perfect person because that new supply has no mistakes that new supply is just perfect because the narcissist hadn't really got into the new supply to learn the humanity the mistakes they made so when they enter into a relationship with the supply that supply is perfect. There's nothing wrong with that supply. And if you notice that if you come against the narcissist with that new supply, the narcissist is very protective of that new supply. They will break friendship. They will break even a contract when they enter into the relationship with a new supply. If you are not careful how you handle that, and it can be a very serious, sometimes fatal situation if you mishandle the new supply. Because in the narcissist's mind, there are so many holes in their life. There are so many vacancies in their lives because of what they went through, traumas they went through, or if they're the golden child, they got what they want when they wanted. So there was no real disciplines for their life. And they were used to trampling over people and being denied uh, truths just so they can get what they want. A narcissist grows up like that. So when the narcissist meet the new supply, the narcissist think I have finally found the person that's going to fill this hole. I finally found my mate. I finally found the person that's going to make this vacancy, this emptiness fulfilled because and that's probably why many narcissists go from supply to supply to supply the initial uh elation of just having that supply there and that supply being perfect so it's almost like a retreat for the narcissist you know when you go on a retreat you rest you feel good good. You know, you got people around you. It's not work oriented. It's rest oriented. It's fun oriented. It's where you can de-stress. It's where you can relax from all of the turmoils of business and ministry and family and the different things and work that you have to go through. And so now you're there to relax and everything about it 
is relaxation. That's the whole thought of your mind. The new supply is like a retreat zone. The narcissist relax with the new retreat to the point where they go into motion into the love bombing effect. And when they love bomb the, the new supply, it is to pull them in because that is their perfection. That is their love. And that's what they call love because within the narcissist, they know that this is not going to last too long. So this uh, new supply is able to bring the narcissist into an operational process of behavior mode that can't continue. It's temporary, but the narcissist feel good. The narcissist is love bombing and the love bombing because the narcissist is an expert of reflection who reflecting who you are and mirroring that back to you and when you mirror that back to you you have a tendency to credit the person who's mirroring instead of understanding what is mirrored when you look in the mirror it's a reflection it's only a reflection what the mirror sees and what the mirror sees when you are being mirrored is you and so that mirror reflect back with the wonderfulness that you are the caring that you are the discipline that you are Everything the narcissist wants is the thing that is going to be magnified. And the narcissist love, quote unquote, what they think as love as the, the, the new supply. Now, we know love is mutual. We know love is giving. And in the beginning, guess what? The narcissist is giving you their time. They are emailing you. They are texting you. And I mean, it's text after text. It's almost like a text every other uh, minute, hour upon hour. You call the narcissist, you can get the narcissist because the narcissist is in a retreat zone. Many of them are in a retreat zone. However, the narcissist, the higher the grade of narcissist, the more astute and intentional the narcissist is because the narcissist is fully aware in certain grades that who they are and they've had enough experience with people, enough experience about themselves to know that there is a timing mechanism and one narcissist said it's like a trigger that goes off inside of them so when they're doing things there comes a time when there's time for degrading and they said that when this trigger goes off inside of them they're love bombing you they're giving you everything you want. I mean, they're whining and dining you, taking you to movies, buying you gifts, gifts that, oh my God, you've been wanting for a long time. Even to the point, the glow happens, your, eye, your eyes light up, your skin looks very moist, reflective. There's so much light, it seems like, in your eyes, and you, you seem younger, like a pregnant woman that is glowing because she's having a baby, because that narcissist was able to go inside of who you are and pull the internal to the external evidence that something is happen and happening. And usually when you are being love bum at this stage, the narcissist is love bumming you with everything they have. And your friends will tell you, you are glowing. What is going on with you? You seem so different. And you, you, before you know it, your emotions have been captured. It ain't, you think you are in control. And you look up and you're out of control because you didn't know that the love bomb was working to that level of intent. It's like a person who the, their first experience with drug, maybe crack cocaine or meth. And then they spend the rest of the time, they're experiencing the same drug, trying to get the same high, that first high. You never get your first high. It's like breaking up with someone that you really love, that was your first love. 
where you can love again and you can even love harder than the first love. But the first love is the first love. It was the first evidence of any emotion that was that intense. And you usually remember that. You usually add something special to that. You usually are very specific about that. Specific about that. So you talk about your first love. Well, when the narcissist is in the retreat zone and they are love bombing you, you are the perfect specimen. And at that time, when the narcissist say, I love you, the, the narcissist's mind, he thinks or she thinks she really love you. And so when I say I love you, that's why you can feel it. You see it in their eyes and you say, but I know, I know they meant what they said. I saw it in their eyes. Yeah, we know because they did for that time. It was temporary. And that's why the narcissists move. They move everything quickly. They move beyond your intent. They move beyond your mind. They move beyond your desire. You desire to have someone, but you don't want to move so fast until you move without caution. And now this lack of caution has got you trapped because there was many red flags that start coming and the narcissist can't help it, but start displaying those red flags because in in the retreat zone, in the in the midst of love bombing, you getting you into the love bombing. That narcissist knows that it's not going to last. They know that that mechanism gonna go off inside of them. They know that there's gonna be a trigger, an internal clock, and it's going to say time up. And when a narcissist is that clock goes off, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter that you love them. It doesn't matter if you forgive them a thousand times. It doesn't matter if you give them everything they want. You are at the next level of the relationship. And that's when the devaluation start to come. But when the narcissist is in the retreat zone, it's like being in a palace with all of the exclusive furnitures and fixtures and the water fountains and the different ponds and going out on the patio and just seeing the ocean afar and the clouds are blue. That's how perfect it seemed. There's not a drop of rain in sight unless rain is what you want. It seemed like you get everything you want. And when you meet them, how can someone be so perfect with the narcissist is thinking the same thing? She is so perfect. I mean, you can be 900 pounds at that time. The narcissist, the fact that the narcissist has calibrated his module to you and he allowed himself to give way to you. The narcissist loves you because the, the only time they can sense this is with the new supply. The old supply start figuring them out and they can't hide anymore because the real them come out. And that's difficult. Why? Because now the person that the narcissist is dealing with wants to deal with responsibility. They want to deal with life. They want to deal with why you're not giving me this. What's wrong with you? Why isn't it like the first time when we met with the love bombing? So they spend all this time to recapture the idolization. And the idolization is perfection. When you are idolizing somebody, you are idolizing them into a God. So you idealize them, the perfect idea, the perfect thought. And that's what the narcissist sees when he's with that new supply. He sees the perfect supply. You are perfect. The words that you say, your laughter, your smell, the way you look at them, because you are looking at them with such admiration and they're getting all of that fuel from your admiration. They can see your totality in yielding to them. First, you come on strong. First, you seem like you got your guards up. First, you're a little bit hesitant. But the more they love bomb you, the more they idealize you, the, the, the walls begin to come down. You start dropping all caution and you just let go. And they are the 
best things and some of you even take them beyond God where these narcissists actually become your God. It doesn't matter what form of worship you have. They now are what you worship because you never seen something so perfect and now your body is affected your hormones are stimulated your brain is affected gravity around you seems different you go outside and the outside seem different you don't want to be with your friends you want to be with the narcissist you're trying to remember you even have kids because now the narcissist is taking the time that you used to spend with the children you now spending with the narcissist and you know you have responsibility even those of you who have animals your animals are being neglected because you are spending time with the narcissist sometime in three months the animal end up being given away because to keep from dying because this narcissist has captivated this person and we're going to talk about when the narcissist into your life what exit your life because nothing competes your dog your children your family nothing competes against the narcissist when the narcissist step in your life they are talking about total occupation of your total person and they go after your total being the narcissist will affect your whole being they will affect your social system your occupational system your financial system they will affect your future they will affect your past they will affect everything because you will always compare the narcissist and the one thing you hear when a person meet a narcissist is i have never I have never, I never loved like that. I never felt like that. Nobody never made me feel like that, especially if it's your first experience. I mean, you are just love bomb. You are just gasping for the reality. You, you think you're in a dream state and in a way you are because it's an illusion. It is the myth of the love bombing and you are entering in to the love bombing stage. It used to take at least three months. Those that are real seasoned, those that are a little older, that has a little more classic, uh, uh, tender to them may take you up to the three months. The younger narcissists that are coming on the scene, that are being trained to be narcissists, that are being trained to, uh, uh, to captivate a woman, but devalue the woman or devalue the men. And when whatever supply you have, you are taught never give that supply control. You are taught that as soon as you enter the relationship, give the relationship a week, be in bed with them within a week, never validate any of their promotion, never validate any of their dreams. Make sure that you counteract their decision. Slowly take uh, priority to yourself and de and, and devalue them in their priorities. Make their priorities secondary. Always upgrade your priority and do it over a period of time. Bring them into the trauma and bonding state. Let them see you love bomb them. You take them out. But these narcissists, they educate so they can have the kind of money to do the kind of thing that would totally mesmerize you totally blow your mind, like take you on the island and spend three days and it's just you on the island, take you on the yacht, take you on a private plane, take you to the best restaurant, four-star best restaurants, where you, five-star restaurants rather, where you are paying $500 for a steak. And I mean, you don't do anything but sit down. Everything is done for you except you swallow on your own. These are the kind of narcissists are being raised up. And they usually, uh, one of uh, my spiritual son, Marcus Moreau, was talking about uh, the different books and different things they have out. That they are training the younger narcissists. And the younger narcissists, those who are elaborate, a lot of times do not captivate you immediately through the on the weekend they captivate you through the week because they want you to know they got the money to sustain during the week they don't have to work for a weekend to spend all the money they got to work another week they are sustaining you through the week relaxing you through the week 
taking you to mind-blowing, dream-like uh, 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 events and taking you to operas that cost tickets $5,000. And so they're taking you to these different places. And then some of you that are meeting your everyday narcissists, but they're young and they're working. They got a mindset of selfishness. You can feel the strength of their selfishness upon meeting them. However, they know they have to hook you. So they go into the love bombing stage. And then some of you have been so hurt until you a little bit toasty when you meet them. You want them to know that you ain't taking nothing and you ain't about to take me through nothing. The narcissist is like, you sure right, baby. I ain't taking you through nothing. Not right now. Why? Because I'm going to love bum you and I'm going to make you pay for that statement. Everything the narcissist do in the beginning, he's pay you are paying it forward. They are going to use it later. The narcissist never get things that they don't use. The narcissist is not a waster of information for them. They are not a waster of time spent with you. It will be used forward because the narcissist know that after they come out of that retreat, after they come out of that myth of being of love bombing you, they know that hole that they felt that they've been trying to cover up with you, cover up with your smiles, cover up with your laugh. And when you hug them, that makes them feel like if they had abandonment issues, finally somebody has captured me and I'm not abandoned. Rejection issues. I'm not rejected. I'm accepted. They got fuel to the max, copious fuel, until it can't even fill them up. It's flowing out of them. It is so much. This is the premiere of the love bombing stage. And so when you are being love bombed, that's why you fell so deeply in love. You said, how could I have been so weak? Baby, it wasn't a matter of weakness. It's a matter of addiction. The weakness was you took the first hit. And when you take the first hit by opening your life up to the narcissist, they know what to do. It's almost like instinctive. Even if they're inexperienced, this instinct inside of them drives them into operation modes with that that vessel, which is the supply. And they do things and they're noticing the results they get. And if they've done it over and over again, they notice that some of the results are similar, but they notice that people give up their will for them. People will yield the rights of their life to them. And when they yield the rights of their life, and then they keep on Bonding with them, connecting with them, because that's what it is, is a love bomb is going to explode and all of the residue is in every arena of your life, your friends, your family. It goes on your job and you just can't seem to wake yourself up. It's like you're in a sleep and then you find that you long for them. You long to talk to them. You say, I'm not going to call them because now things are starting to get in a little uh, uh, different. You know, you notice that they're not calling as much. They're not texting as much. Well, it's not that you've changed. In that mechanism, that trigger has went off inside the narcissist that one day they wake up, that they went to bed loving that supply. You were so perfect. They held you. They kissed you. You know, it wasn't nothing you couldn't get. I mean, they would make sure you have it. They would even sacrifice to get some things to you. And they look like the real deal because in the love bombing stage, they start sacrificing because they that hole in them seemed like it was filled, that craving in them seemed like it was met. And it seemed like you were the perfect person that they've been waiting for out of all the supply. Guess what? They said it with every supply. They did it with every supply. You said, but I got to be special. Everyone is special. Every supply is special. Every last one of them. The narcissist can fall in love a thousand times if they have a thousand supply. And each time was the real deal. Each time this supply was going to fill the vacancy. 
this time, this supply was going to fill the hole. And that's why if you talk to any of the previous supply, they all saying the same thing. They seem so perfect. They seem like I met the one that I've been looking for. They had this glow about them. They thought about them. They can get in contact with them. And then the narcissist went to sleep. Boom. And that trigger them went off. And the narcissist said, it's not that they don't like the supply. They're disgusted with the supply. The thing that captivated them, that they loved about the supply, they can't stand it. They despise the thing that a few hours ago they loved. A few minutes ago they loved. Because if, if the trigger goes off during the day, they change like they got bipolar. They change. And you wonder what you did. And you can't find anything different than what you was doing. Because it's not you. It's them. You're still in love. You're still mesmerized. You're still captivated. You're still giving. You're still just as beautiful as you were as when they met you. That's why they loved you. For a moment. But what they call love we call using because it's everything we gave and nothing that we were because we made them feel good because we gave them who we were they were able to accept that every new supply is the retreat zone for the narcissist if you ever want to know if a narcissist can love the closest you're going to get to knowing that is in the introductory stage. When you are getting ready to walk through the gates of love bombing and through the doors of perfection and you are asleep in the bed of idolization and being mesmerized as you walk through the floors every day in the palace of illusion. Because it won't stay. It won't last. Because they realize that's not who they are. And the real them will come out. This is when your storm clouds begin. In the storm clouds is evidence that the storm is coming. You say, how can I avoid this? The best thing to do is when you meet the narcissist, the first red flag is this is too perfect. It's to back up and think about it. Because if you don't, the addiction is real. And you will see if you don't listen, if you don't pay attention, if you're not focused, if you're not alert, You'll look up months later. Oh, you're going to have some time. And see, it's the time that is so deceptive. Because you're thinking if it wasn't any good, why didn't it diminish right away? Some evils can have long-term connections. There are people who've been with a narcissist for 20 years. And they're in the same place. Life is has a recycling system like a hamster. And you can choose it if you don't wake up. The dangerous thing is to go to sleep. That is another video. I hope that this video has been a blessing to you and even answered some questions for you. Those of you who wonder, does the narcissist love? The narcissist felt like they loved you when you were in the love bombing stage. The narcissist felt like you were perfect. That's why you felt perfect. That's why you felt like a queen. You felt like a king. They made you feel like nobody else could make you feel. And you said, oh, the sex was mesmerizing. Part of that was you. They cannot even know what they're doing. You are so hyped until just a touch sends you off. 
because you are addicted to the narcissist. The narcissist is very persuasive. They have a spirit of persuasion with them where you seem to go on a hypnotic effect and you're no longer thinking in your rational mind. And then you slowly start doing things that you would do irrationally because you're not in your rational mind. And when you look in the narcissist, you go miles, thousands of miles away because you hide in their eyes. You hide in their looks. You hide in the crevice of their arms, their words, the breath on your ears, the heartbeat that you can hear. And you can feel them. And they let you. They let you feel whatever you want to feel. They let you do whatever many of them you want to do. They are mechanical. But during this period, they seem so human. They seem so right. They seem so chosen. And the truth of it is, you were the one that was selected. They showed up. Probably after much observation of you. So think about it. You can give many years to what you will regret. Or you can get your life back while you have a chance. If it's too good, question it. Make sure it's true good, not too good. Because true good will last. It will stand the test of time. And that's where the narcissist fail. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was an honor and a privilege for me to bring it to you. Keep writing me. Keep saying the, and asking me questions. And keep looking at these videos. These videos are healing for you. They are answers for you. They take the fog away. They take the scales out of your eyes. If you don't have anybody to talk to, let the video for a minute be a voice. Psychology Today has many therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, uh, counselors that can assist you if you want some uh, professional help. Also, if you're in the state of Washington, Dr. Carmen Bryan, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, is one of the top therapists here in the state of Washington. You can also go to her video, Overcome Narcissist Abuse. Also, Telsha. Telsha has a video. It's the uh, T on NPD. Very, very, very good. And these are people that I suggest. Karen Smith, you know, uh, Narc Freedom. Please, we do this so you can be equipped, so you can weaponize yourself against being pulled into years of tragedy and trauma. Life is so huge and it's meant to be big just for you to enjoy. Enjoy every minute of it and captivate every minute of it and be successful in every minute of it. Remember, even in life with the narcissist, there's definitely success afterwards. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Write me, uh, destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. Destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. If you would like sessions with me, you can write me or you can call me um, at uh, our business line. If you write me, I will give you that number and we can do sessions together. We can start the pathway for every place you hurt because in that pathway is all of the places you can heal and you can recover. There is life after the narcissist. I will see you on the next video. And remember, the narcissist retreat is the beginning of the supply. But it is a myth. It doesn't last. 
We want to give you things that last. I'm Helen Sattler, your destiny helper. I will see you on the next video.